When Taco Bell first started getting popular in the early 60s, they had to put signs on the walls that explained to customers how to pronounce the word taco. This is, to the contemporary American, almost impossible to imagine. Until you realize that modern Americans struggle so hard to pronounce Chipotle correctly that they put it on the bags. Where does Chipotle even come from? Chipotle, like taco, is spelled out phonetically right there, plain as day to sound it out. How hard could it really be? Then again, I'm Mexican, so maybe I have an unfair advantage. Consider instead mascarpone. There are people living among us who pronounce it marscapone, even though mascarpone is spelled just as phonetically as taco and chipotle. This, like chipotle, isn't even a matter of accent or pronunciation, but rather a mixing up of letter order. Then again, I grew up watching Giada De Laurentiis, so I, as a non-Italian, know firsthand how jarring it is to hear someone switch from casual English to perfect native pronunciation. It's the conversational equivalent of walking at a casual pace, then suddenly performing a backflip, sticking the landing, and carrying on as if nothing happened. This is how I came to approach my pronunciation gripes and how I identified a word that I struggle with for no reason. The most correct way to pronounce this word is guacamole, with a soft, barely audible G at the beginning. But hard G, guacamole, is acceptable. And heck, in America, guacamole will do in most situations. I cringe at myself a little bit for trying to effortlessly code switch sometimes, Giada style. But with my cultural background, guacamole is one of the goofiest sounding words of all time. I simply can't do it. On top of this, this one word is apparently uniquely difficult for me. I have no problem using the casual American pronunciation for, say, tortilla instead of tortilla. That's a problem when I go to fast casual restaurants because it feels clumsy to use the anglicized versions of every ingredient except for one. Like, let me get a barbacoa bowl with queso and um, guacamole. Like the chipotle sayers, I'm not even working on this problem. In private company, I use my own word that I made up. I might say, Brie, do you want yours with or without guacalito? So much of this pronunciation problem, if not all of it, comes from how and where you were raised. I was raised in Texas with an internet connection. So after seeing dozens of online ads for a new Disney movie I hadn't ever discussed out loud, I uttered, for example, who's seen that new movie Moana? And at the same time, since so much of my culinary education took place on YouTube, certain ingredients like gochugaru and gochujang feel weird to retroactively anglicize like gochujang and gochugaru. I'll be personally wrestling with this problem forever, just like I have been in the past. Praise the almighty algorithm for serving me Dr. Jeff Lindsay's YouTube channel. He's a linguist who posts videos explaining things that I would otherwise find impossibly confounding, like why some people say Tuesday instead of Tuesday, or why some people say ax instead of ask. If this conversation has left you wanting more conclusive answers, he's your guy. If I am to be a YouTuber about my conclusion, I would end this by saying, what are some words you struggle with pronouncing? Let me know all about it in the comments. I could take this in a video essayist direction and pen a finale about how language like history is written by the winners and how reflection and education can take us all from incredulous about each other's behaviors to brothers and sisters in a shared experience of varied flavors. Instead, I'll just say the video is over and you can go watch a different one now. Goodbye.